Nevertheless, he's, a, he's, a, he's accepting that scientists from Galileo on have been the ones who care the most about matter and energy, about the material world, and therefore the ones that have managed to develop the most knowledge about it. So, so he's, uh, he's accepting that, while at the same time not following them wherever they want to go. I will come back to the subject of what Deleuze, how Deleuze changes science on Wednesday. Okay, today let's just uh, let's just uh, uh, just agree with me that this is interesting, and then I will I will make it much more. I will put a foundation on it, which is a little more solid on Wednesday. So we just saw one reasoning style, population thinking, that brought the concept of difference to the foreground. If there are no differences in the copying process, in the replication process, there is no evolution, period. And, and differences are there essentially, to put it in a different way. That is, in fact, how he breaks with Aristotle. Aristotle used differences to arrive at species, but then he said species are eternal and unchanging. We, we want to conceive them as historical entities that are constantly changing, even if they change too slowly for us to notice. Oops, I misspelled differences there. That's kind of different. I can't talk and write at the same time, apparently. Ooh, that looks ugly. Anyways, a difference with a difference. <laughs> Intensive thinking is the second reasoning style that Deleuze borrows from science. This reasoning style was born in the 19th century during when as thermodynamics was being created, but it applies to many other processes. For instance, we just saw, we just talked about animals and plants, and we talked about, about how animals and plants reproduce, how they pass their genes through further gener to, 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 to new generations, and how those genes become a, 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 the, the, the source of evolution. But animals and plants also exist in relationship to one another in the, in the way in which they extract energy from their surroundings. They, they need to eat. In addition to reproduce, animals need to eat. And that forms food webs. A food web has nothing genetic about it. A food web is something that exists you know, the genes are there to support the behaviors of the animals and so on, but the food web is exclusively intensive. A food web always starts, at least terrestrial food webs, with plants, which are the primary producers. You take the first bite, so to speak, the first bite of the food web is when plants bite out of the solar stream, out of the electromagnetic radiation we're getting from the sun, out of the light we're getting from the sun. They take the first bite through photosynthesis and they convert electromagnetic energy into chemical energy. They store sunlight into sugar. Sugar is a chemical molecule that stores a lot of energy, hence how, you know, the energy that it makes you feel when you get a sugar high from eating chocolate or from eating some sugar. But it was a, a very early invention, several billion years ago. With bacteria discover photosynthesis, and it's, it's a secret that we humans still don't, cannot figure out. Nevertheless, that magical process of converting one type of energy into another type of energy is what begins food, food chains, or food webs, because once plants store solar energy into sugars, then herbivores can come and eat the plants, convert it into flesh and muscle, then carnivores can come in and eat the herbivores, eat that flesh and muscle, and, uh, and, 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 and use it as, uh, to live. Then when the carnivores and herbivores die, microorganisms decompose their bodies, re-inject all those nutrients into the ecosystem, plants absorb them with their roots from the soil, and the whole cycle starts again. The circulation of matter and energy through ecosystems, you know, is a circulation of flesh, plant flesh, herbivore flesh, carnivore flesh, but the word flesh is a little too porno for uh, ecologists, so they use a technical term, biomass. You know, it sounds a, a, a lot less pornographic, 
So they, they, talk, they talk about the circulation of biomass, but it, it just means the circulation of flesh through food webs or food chains. So it, intensive thinking is all about the circulation of energy and the transformation of one type of energy into another type of energy. But right now, I don't want to talk about ecosystems, I want to talk about the philosophical aspects of this. So let's start by thinking not about something as complex as an ecosystem, but something a little less complex. The, 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 the atmosphere as it's coupled to the hydrosphere. Now, every time we look at the sky, every single day, we see a constant creation. Unless you live in London, which of course 